50 years of Star Trek that had existed before we came into it, we wanted to play in harmony with what is known as Star Trek canon. Um, and that meant that we had an enormous amount to draw from. Whereas there was really only one story we felt we could tell in the first one, there were a million in the second. There are a number of characters we could have used, and there are a number of issues that we talked about in terms of Khan, and, and one of them was, why do that? Why bring him back? We would established a brand new sort of timeline. We could do anything we want. Let's just do something brand new. But the truth is that no one resonated like Khan. There was such a, a personal connection between Khan and Kirk. Khan, you still remember Admiral. To me, it was the combination of the opportunity of taking something that was extraordinarily rich and mythic and also update it not only with a new actor, but to take the character and sort of use that character in a way that hadn't been used before. He was really the one character that we were going to completely reinvent the way we tried to reinvent the main characters. Mr. Spock, in your travels, did you ever encounter a man named Khan? Originally, the, the, the first thing we thought of was, you know, who are the actors that we thought would feel as we did with the first, you know, film, in the spirit of what had come before. Damon mentioned Ben Cumberbatch, and I, I watched him, and he was so not the Khan that I knew at all. And so on that level, I thought, oh, well, we're definitely going to get in trouble because, you know, fans of it are going to say, oh, he looks nothing like it. it, makes no sense. But the truth is, I think if something is good, that sort of supersedes everything. This felt like the righteous way to go because he was so damn good. I got a call saying um, they are considering you to play the baddie in the next Star Trek film, I went, well, as in the J.J. Abrams franchise. And I went, yeah. I went, oh, nice. Um, can I see a script? No. Can I see something? No. Well, who am I playing? We can't tell you. <laughs> Green Benedict Lutz. Cumberbatch. Yes, Cumberbatch. You know, he's flying over right now. He's like, Zachary Quinto. <laughs> King, You're King, mine. Quinto. <laughs> <laughs> You're going down. <laughs> I am literally, pretty much literally off the boat. So it's about 12 o'clock, even though it's only, what is it here? It's tea time here, isn't it, really? So I'm, uh, I'm kind of in a daze. I'm in a bit of a dream. And it all feels a bit surreal. You know, Benedict's a very kind of casual, easygoing guy, and to see Khan come to life, and it was like he all of a sudden stood up straighter, and his, you know, back was like ramrod straight, and his head would tilt in these precise angles, and I just it was so much fun to watch. Why aren't we moving? An unexpected malfunction, perhaps in your warp core. There's a lot of power in stillness, and Benedict certainly understands that. And in a big, huge action movie like this, I think those moments can sometimes be the most resonant for the audience because it, it requires them to lean in. John Hurt was the fiction created by your Admiral Marcus. A smokescreen to conceal my true identity. My name is Khan. The big line in this movie is, my name is Khan. We knew that if we were able to nail that moment, that it would be a huge, you know, like there'd be a gasp from the audience or applause from people who really wanted that to happen or boos from people who just hated us for doing it. When I read that in the script, I just leapt off my seat and screamed at the top of my voice. I remember thinking the people in the room next to me must think someone's being murdered. I had no choice but to escape alone. We needed to make this character talk about himself and what his past was to both huge fans of Trek who are going to be just rubbing their hands together going, oh my god, I know what the Botany Bay is. I understand why that guy in that torpedo is frozen and why there are 72 of them and someone who didn't know any of these things. If you want to know why I did what I did, go and take a look. Give me one reason why I should listen to you. I can give you 72. Who is this man who has been brought back from death, has been defrosted and aligned to play a, a spearheading role in militarizing Starfleet and creating weapons of mass destruction as well as heading up an army of elite warriors? I had every reason to suspect that Marcus had killed every single one of the people I hold most dear. The character Khan needs to have 
melodrama to him. Um, it's got to be hyper real, but at the same time, it's got to be really relatable. So the, the fun surprise is when he says, is there anything you would do for your family in a very relatable and an emotional way? So you kind of can't deny him because what he's saying is something that we all feel. My crew is my family, Kirk. Is there anything you would not do for your family? He's dealt quite a rough hand. Maybe I'm just saying that because I'm the man who plays it. He does open fire on an unarmed room of Starfleet commanders. But his hands, in my eyes, as a character, are utterly tied by what Marcus is doing. Khan is almost a weapon, and Alexander Marcus is the human that uses that weapon. <laughs> Normally in a popcorn summer movie, you want to know who your bad guy really is. And here we have two guys that are candidates for who the villain is. While Khan may in fact be the same Khan that you know from the Wrath of Khan, his motivations are extremely different. And he was used by the real big bad of our movie. And that real big bad is Admiral Marcus. Kirk, you want to take him out? You park on the edge of the neutral zone. You lock onto Harrison's position. You fire, you kill him, and you haul ass. The guy who's playing the antagonist cannot look at his part as an antagonist. Everybody from the inside out looks like a protagonist. All Alexander Marcus is trying to do, he's not doing evil for evil's sake. He's a guy who really believes that what he's doing is patriotic. In this movie, you're really questioning, what do I do in this situation? Where does your loyalty lie? Who do you trust? It's an infinitely more kind of complex and in some ways darker story than the first movie. He's playing you, son. Don't you see that? Khan and his crew were condemned to death as war criminals. And now it is our duty to carry out that sentence before anybody else dies because of him. Give him to me so that I can end what I started.